Hello everybody, I'm DL Ziggs, and today I have myself a special guest. Hello, I'm Angel Rose, the walking cupcake. Yes, and for today's video, as you can see on the screen, it is my top 10 favorite Pokemon. Also, it'll be the walking cupcake's top 10 favorite Pokemon as well. Now, Hello. Yes. Now, how I will go off my top 10, I'm going to go off the opinion, always, the appearance, do not look at the battling style because, spoilers, some of my uh, top 10 are not really competitive wise, and the last one is off the anime because watching Pokemon, I've seen what they do, I love what they do, it's awesome. Wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah, totally, and mine aren't really competitive either. Some of them have because of competitive, but for the most part it's just ones that I like. Yes. Okay, so let's get started with number 10. Number 10 on Don't my try. list would have to be Jump Club. What the hell you would expect me? Why would I say Jump Club? Well, not gonna lie, Jump Club has been one of my favorite grass types. I mean, it's short, it's adorable, it's really fast, and it just looks like a cheerleader to me with those freaking pom pom dandelions it's adorable and also because I love I love dandelions they're my favorite flower because I like to just go on them and make wishes that's why I love jump fluff what do you think of jump fluff oh jump fluff's freaking adorable I love it it's it's amazing <laughs> so, yeah. so my number 10 okay um, so my number 10 is something that a lot of people think is generally really worthless and Whatnot. Um, my number 10 is Love Disc, the little butterfish of adorable heart shapes. Um, I really like, I like its design. It's simple, it's just a sideways heart, and also, like, the Pokedex entry says that, like, oh, you, if you encounter one with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, it's supposed to bring everlasting love, and I really like that idea. And I also had one in a playthrough of, um, my Sapphire version where I did all water types, and my love kit this kicks so much butt. Her name was Cinderella. That is awesome. Me, I generally do not like Love Disc so well because it just looks pretty whack in my opinion, but hey, it's it's your opinion, like you said, and I guess Love Disc can be pretty cool at times. Alright, so now, we've done with number 10. Number 9! Love Baby. Now, if you're wondering, what Love Baby? Well, when I first started playing X and Y, Flabebe was the one of the first encounters I've had with, after I just beat the first gym, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to catch this thing. And then when I caught it, when I found out it was a fairy type, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And the reason why I love Flabebe is because I love its appearance. I love how it's like hanging on its little flower. Um, it, it evolves into Florges. And its middle version of Floet has an awesome story with AZ. And it's basically the reason behind our the playthrough we go through. And Flabebe and his whole line is just freaking awesome. What do you think? Well Flabebe is adorable and I really I love the I love that it comes in different colors. I especially like the blue one. Um, my number 9, however, has to be an evolution, specifically Flareon. I really like Flareon. It's adorable, it's all fluffy, it's nice and warm, and, I mean, in competitive ways, when you give guts on it, it kills everything, <laughs> provided it goes fast enough, but I think it doesn't necessarily get enough credit from a lot of competitive people, and it's adorable and awesome. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Flareon, no doubt, my fate, my second favorite EV because it's just freaking awesome. It's like, I've used it before in competitive battle, I battled a guy who used Ubers and Act with a Flareon and I completely slept. It was epic. I was like, get on my Flareon now. Get on the prop, the false prophet's level. Number 8! Now this one comes near and dear to the heart because you would not expect this one. But number eight on my list would have to be Spinbow. 
Spinda, Spinda's been one of the coolest third gen pokes I've seen. Um, I've caught it before. I love how it has like so many multiple patterns. And okay, I'm gonna go in on a competitive wise, but when I used it in a competitive battle and I used contrary um, superpower, I would just do a lot of work against a lot of teams. And Spinda was awesome, especially when I ran it with choice cards. But that's competitive wise. On appearance wise, it's pretty cool. I love its I love its eyes. How it's just like so dizzy. And even though I still never understand, how do you know if Spinda's unable to battle and his eyes are already just like that? I mean, does his eyes just go to normal? Cause that would be awesome. But who knows? What do you think? Um. Well, whenever I see it in X and Y, I think, "Go home, Spinda. You're drunk." <laughs> 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 nice. But it's it's really adorable. I I wish that I actually used it more often. Oh, I agree. My number eight. Yeah. <laughs> My number eight. I probably wouldn't have put on this list if I had made this list a few days ago because it's been getting a ton of exposure lately. My number eight is Pachirisu. Pachirisu! The VGC yeah. champion! Yeah. Had this been a few days ago when I wrote this down, I wouldn't have put it on a list just because it's been getting a lot of exposure. It's my favorite one of the quote-unquote Pikachu clones. It's a... It's a... It's a spin-off freaking squirrel for doing that in my game and it was also one of the first shinies that I p used on the poker radar when I did pearl version so it's my num nums is extra special to my heart uh, what do you think <laughs> reminds me of the time when I was playing diamond on the new game I wanted to make I used Pachirisu on my team and I grew him all the way up to level 100 I used him in the elite four and he has saved my butt a thousand times if my diamond wasn't corrupted, I would still I would have brought that little Pachirisu over here just to say hello. But yes, Pachirisu is pretty awesome. I give you that. Now number seven. Number seven. Oh, this one is this is Gen One, basically. But this is the most thug Pokemon that I love in Gen One, and that is the Do King. Mr. Horntastic! Why even? Because look at it. It looks tough. It looks like he's just ready to take over the world. He's like, he's a king. A Nino king. He is just awesome looking. I mean, he's, he's been like, refused a lot. He's been seen in the Pokemon uh, anime, games, all that. And I just love Nino King so much because he's just like, he's just freaking thug looking. What would you say? Oh, Nino King's a badass. <laughs> and he's he's awesome. Um, my number seven, he had to be on this list somewhere because he's my gosh darn mascot. Slurpuff! Oh, Yay! Slurpuff! <laughs> yeah. Um... Truth be told, I've never actually used a slip up. I've got a couple in my box that I need to breed and get the perfect stats for and whatnot, but it's a freaking cupcake. Who doesn't love cupcakes? Seriously. Uh, if I was that dumb. Well, I mean, that's you use lactose free milk for that then. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I love cupcakes. <laughs> But yeah, Slurpuff is pretty cool. I mean, it, in appearance-wise, it looks adorable. It looks like a dog, and it's just really awesome. And would you want to keep a Slurpuff as a pet? Well, I might, but then again, I might. He might be gone after a while. Not sorry. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> number six. Oh, great. Number six. This one is near here also. This is a Pokemon from the Johto region. You would not expect this one, but maybe. But number six on my list is Heracross. Heracross, in the anime, I just loved Heracross so much because he looked so cool. He was pretty funny when anytime he would always try to sap honey from like um, grass types like Bulbasaur, Venusaur trees, 
And like I just like it because it's a giant beetle and it has like a freaking awesome looking horn. And it's just ready to wreck. Heracross is awesome. And it's mega that it got mega this uh gen would made it pretty cooler because it's awesome wise and that just shows Heracross is a complete thug. Am I right? Oh, you are so right. What's really interesting about Heracross is that, um, you know, what inspired Pokemon was um, when the maker of it, when he was a kid, they would get little stag beetles and make them fight each other, and that's basically what Heracross is. So, in a sense, Heracross is the inspiration for Pokemon in that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, my number six is a number is a six gen Pokemon. The Lord Koopa Koop! Goodra! I love Gudra. It is so adorable. It hugs its trainer in gooey hugs and not to mention, and like, it's got an awesome shiny form. It's got an awesome regular form. You know, you've got hydration and gooey and I, she wrecked shop in my Gen 6 playthrough and I love her. What do you think? <laughs> Gudra's a sperm dragon. <laughs> I'm just messing. Gudra is pretty cool. I mean, I have yet to use one, because I just love using, like, other dragons, like, Tyrantrum, or, like, anything else that's a thug dragon, but Gudra will soon be used one day, if I remember. <laughs> but yeah. Number five! Number five on my list is Wishcash. Wishcash was my is my favorite water ground type out of all the water ground types. And the thing about Wishcash is that every time I see it like like when it's body up and it's like its tail and stuff, it just looks like if someone's just holding a bag of money. And every time I have a Wishcash I always give it money bags. Because it's that's what it looks like whenever it just like flops with its tail in the air. It's just like a freaking bag of money. And I just love Wishcast. Especially with that awesome mustache. It's fancy. So that's how you know Wishcast is like rich. He's full of money. He's money bags. That's what makes Wishcast so freaking awesome. He's so fancy. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, I really like, Wish Cash is really cool, just because, like, um, his idea of him, you know, he's, he causes earthquakes and stuff, that's because in a lot of old folklore in Japan, they say that, you know, um, catfish cause earthquakes in old folklore, so that's really cool on Wish Cash's part. There was actually a Pokemon episode that was banned because it was causing earthquakes around the time earthquakes were actually happening in Japan. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. And Wishpass was the only Pokemon I ever see ever eat a trainer's Master Ball and not get caught. And that was the best thing ever. Wishpass for the win! Okay, so my number five is actually the only Johto Pokemon on this list, which is weird because Johto's like my favorite region. Um, and that is Skiploom. I love Skip Skiploom. <laughs> Yeah, now you might be asking, why not hop it? It's cute and pink. Why not jump hop? It's the final evolution and is awesome. Um, well, because of Pokemon Stadium 2, I would always use Skip Bloom because it had a better move set in the game, and using Skip Bloom is what taught me that, oh hey, Sunny Day makes Solar Beam not take a turn to charge up. And also, I just, I love that it's got the flower on its head that spins around, and it's got, like, little ears that look like that one dog person from Animal Crossing, and it's just adorable, and I love it. Nice. Well, I'm no flower person, because Skip Bloom ain't no jump love. It involves two jump love, but it ain't no jump love. But hey. Skip Bloom is pretty cool. I mean, that grass, the first grass flying is pretty awesome. It's not the only one, because we have, uh, we have Mr. Tropius as well. But, yeah, he's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, Tropius is awesome. It's heck, it's a guy so. Alright, so, number four. Number four comes from the Sinnoh region. It's actually, I think, the only Sinnoh Pokemon on this list. Unless I've forgotten. But number four is Spiritomb. Spiritomb, the... 
one of the ghost dark type, actually the second to last ghost dark type, has been pretty, looks pretty awesome to me. I mean, when I read its Pokedex, how it has 108 spirits inside, I was like, oh my gosh, 108 in this in spirit tomb? That's actually pretty legit. And I just love how in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you just you do that old keystone thing where you just meet up with people. I would usually cheat and have my friend make a secret base like right next to me so we just like meet and just go back to meet and then we'd both be able to catch our spirit tombs but I just love spirit tombs so much because it looks pretty cool I love the story behind it I think the anime talked about it and I forgot about it you know, how it's like a keystone was pretty cool and yeah I just love spirit tomb you? Spirit tomb reminds me of the, ha of the haunted mansion we have 999 happy hunts here, but there's room for a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, I was at Disneyland the other day, so I can't help it. <laughs> don't judge. My number... Yeah, no judging. My number four is the first legendary Pokemon on here, and that would be Manaphy. Um, ever since I learned about Manaphy when, you know, they had the, the movie for it with May befriending Manaphy and whatever, I just fell in love with it. First of all, I love the water, the ocean is amazing, I used, I grew up there for a few years of my life, and just the idea of an egg having a legendary Pokemon, that always fascinated me when I was little, to a point where like, I actually have a Manaphy and a Fiona plushie on my shelf over in my room right now, they're just adorable, I want to hug it, and it's like, Manaphy, Manaphy, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Manaphy's pretty cool. I mean, when I first saw it, honestly, I always kept thinking, like, Manaphy, and, like, when I saw the Fire and the Mystery of Mew, I always kept thinking Lucario, Weavile, and Manaphy were in the Hoenn region, and I was like, where can I find these guys? But that was only because I was young, so I would not have known. And then when I found out it was going to be uh, in the Diamond and Pearl games, I was like, aw, oh, sweet, I can get these awesome ones. And... When I found out Manaphy was an event, I was like, I don't have anything to get the event. But me being the young kid I was, I was like, action replay for days. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I did too. <laughs> yeah. But that day is over now. Alright, so number three. Number three comes near and dear to the heart. Because number three is my mascot, and that's Throw! Now, Throw had to be on this list, because Throw, Throw is me. Throw is who I am. I am Throw. Throw is just Throw. Why is me number one? Because I have a much more favorite number one. But Throw has been like really cool in the anime. He was like a complete thug. And then his battle against Sock was pretty epic. It was a really close one. And just Throw dominating a lot of that competition was pretty epic. I. I'd say so myself, and I just love Throw. How about you? Throw's pretty cool. I've never actually used one, and I don't have a particular bond to it, but he's really interesting, and I like the dynamic between him and Sock. Yeah. My number three is pretty close to my heart, because this was a Pokemon that I loved when I was really little, and still do. Mew. Pokemon 151. I love, I love cats. I am I'm seriously a, a cat person. I have three cats in my She's house, crazy. so yeah, I'm a little. Well, actually, I'm not that crazy, but I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> um, not yet. Yeah, I'd have to get my own house for that. <laughs> but Mew, and just there's just a lot that goes behind Mew that's really interesting because it's like yeah, it's a cat, but it's also kind of a undeveloped person type thing, and it's basically got all the genetic potential for every Pokemon, and also, like, it was in the movies with Mewtwo, and ever since I was little, I just always loved Mew, and I always will. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Mew is pretty cool. When I first saw the movie, I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's adorable. And then, I saw a battle of Mewtwo, and I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's freaking bug. This thing is gonna wreck some world. This thing's gonna beat up Mewtwo. But Mew is pretty awesome. Alright. Number two. Number two was on a previous list a long time ago, and this is my favorite rock type Pokemon. 
Tyranitar. Tyranitar is like was my favorite ever since I saw it in uh, Pokemon Forever the movie. I saw it how it looked pretty awesome, how it would it would take down Brock's Onyx. How I just love its appearance. I love the diamond on its body, and the thing that made it more awesome was when it got a Mega Evolution. I was like, yes, Tyranitar, Mega, finally some recognition. I mean, I mean, Tyranitar had already enough recognition because of that power, that beautiful sand. But him having a Mega made him even more cool to me, and he just became one of my favorite rock types. He's always in my mono rock teams, no matter what, no matter what mono rock team I have. Tyranitar is just there, and I just love him. How about you? Try me. Yeah, Trinitar is really awesome. Um, I actually prefer Larvitar. Like, the episodes in the anime with Larvitar are my favorite ever in the entire anime. Ah! <laughs> I love those episodes. Um, my number two is goes back to my first ever playthrough of a Pokemon game ever, and that was in my yellow version with my Nidoqueen. Oh my oh, god. Oh, oh, oh. My Nidoqueen. Yeah. She wrecked house like okay you never like when you're little and you play a pokemon game and like you don't necessarily know how to train pokemon effectively and you end up raising one above all the others and it just dominates everything that was nido queen like my nido queen would body slam and earthquake everything and then i brought it over my crystal version and defeated red with her i mean she was amazing and i haven't used her very well since then i keep meaning to make a good Nido Queen or whatever, but she is just amazing. Oh, oh, looks like we both have a Nido on this list, and that's what makes it awesome. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we, I have the king, you have the queen. Now, Hell yeah. And finally, number one, my favorite Pokemon. Dumb. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing that because that's gonna hurt my lungs. <laughs> I could have actually done. Making the Krabby Patty. <laughs> but yeah, my number one favorite Pokemon. Out of all 780 Pokemon, including the ones that are probably going to happen if we have another gen, my number one Pokemon is... Drumroll, please. Chin Chow. Thank you. Chin Chow has been one of my favorite Pokemon ever since I first, ever since I first saw it. When I first saw an anime, uh, anime, I was like, oh my gosh, this thing looks so awesome. And then when I saw him go against a Pikachu and it absorbed thunder attacks, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is epic. What is this Pokemon? And every time, I would just love Chin Chow. Back in the third gen, I would always dive. I would always go dive and just look for Chin Chows under the sea, and then every time I saw one, I would just catch and I was like, yes, I got my Chin Chow, and I would just keep looking for Chin Chows and other gens, all the way to here, I still look for Chin Chow. Chin Chow, the first water electric type, first, the only water electric type that absorbs electric attacks, and has abilities to absorb water attacks, and, uh, and another ability which I keep forgetting. It's just so awesome. I love this thing. I love Chin Chow to death. Chin Chow for life. And if anyone Chin ever gets me a Chin Chow, and if anyone ever gets a, be a Chin Chow plush, I will just love them forever. I will love them forever because I just want Chin Chow for reals. Yeah, Chin Chow is pretty darn awesome. So now, I'm going to talk about my number one. Yay! So, my number one goes back to when I would actually... Yeah, so my number one kind of goes back to when I was playing fourth gen and learning about the different legendaries and whatnot, and in Japan they announced the newest movie that was coming out. Giratina and the Bouquet of the Sky. Shaman. 
I freaking love Shaman. Shaman was what, like, like the... Me, I became so, like, looking up the movie for that was the first time I ever watched the Pokemon anime in Japanese just because I wanted to watch the movie. And then I remember, you know, when they premiered the movie on Cartoon Network, like, I was sitting down on the couch all ready to watch it, and then my dad changed the channel for a second, and I yelled at him, like, no, I want to watch this movie! And they're like, Acacia, it's just Pokemon, calm down! And I was in high school at the time, so it's like, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I really, I really love this design. It's, it's green, it's cute, it's got flowers, it can fly if you give it the great to be a flower which makes it more useful in battle but i've always loved the land more and more it's just a cute little hedgehog and i could hold it and hug it in my arms and it's it's the gratitude pokemon it's just awesome ah and actually a good friend over here dl ziggs actually recently bought me a plushie of it from Amazon that came from China and it's in my it's on my shelf right now. I love it. Yes, I and she is speaking the truth. I was just looking around. I was around on Amazon for a while and I was like maybe she would like a flush. And I was like, can I have your address? Can I have this? Can I have that? So I know that I can mail this to you. And she didn't, she thought I was kidding. She really didn't. No, I she didn't. doubted me. And then right when it came to her door, that shaman basically just smacked her in the face saying, It should have listened to him. And Actually, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, my parents were like, Acacia, what did you get from China? And I'm just like, No, we didn't. And I opened it, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, he actually got it for me! And then my dad threw it across the room like it was a football. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's sitting up on my shelf right now, and I love it. It's adorable. And I wish that they made, like, official Chin Chow plush, but I'd have to, like, make one, and I'm not that good with sewing. I didn't even sew my Zelda cosplay, so... Ah, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Basically, Shaman's pretty awesome, but... I, I just want to thank you all for staying in this top ten. Um, I want to thank uh, Angel Rose for staying in this awesome top 10 and giving her top 10 because well, thanks it's for the invite. You are ever so welcome. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to her channel. I'm going to put her, I'm going to annotate her channel so y'all can, like, check out, like, the, her part one of her playthrough and she's going to do more sooner or later and some other stuff she's done. Because some of the videos she's done, even though it's not Pokemon based, it's pretty awesome. I've seen a lot of people. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you all later. Alright, goodbye. Stay tuned.